All right, guys, in this segment, we're going to take a quick look at uh, the Barry's 220 grain uh, plated bullet. Now, this is a subsonic loading that, that I did. I actually had uh, the video of, of running this bullet in the gel block the other day out of the 16 inch POF, uh, running right at 1,000 foot per second out of the 16 inch barrel. Today, I have my 16 inch POF and my 10 and a half inch uh, 300 blackout pistol out here. And I also have my Silencer Co hybrid 46 back from Silencer Co. Uh, I've, I've run some 22 in this. This is really the first time I've had it back out at the range uh, to do anything with. And I wanna, I'm want i gonna be running this 220 grain plated bullet through the 16 inch POF and the 10 and a half inch uh, AR pistol build over the Garmin Zero C1 getting velocity checks on these. So uh, I'll probably do a couple of rounds unsuppressed out of each one and then rounds suppressed out of each one just to see what kind of differences we're getting uh, out of the 16 inch barrel to the 10 and a half inch barrel plus suppressed versus unsuppressed. So stay tuned. All right, guys, I don't have anything particular that I'm shooting at back here. Uh, just got some cans and some clay targets on the backstop. And uh, I'm actually gonna get something to set this garment on to get it up to where I can shoot over top of it. All right, guys, so uh, I've got the garment elevated up here a little bit. Seems like it does better when it's kind of in this orientation to the shot versus uh, too far away. So I wanna make sure I get the velocities on these. I'm gonna start out by running five rounds unsuppressed out of the rifle, and then I'll reset the Garmin. I'll run five rounds unsuppressed out of the pistol, and then I'll reset the Garmin. Then I'll do five rounds or more suppressed out of the rifle, and then five or more rounds suppressed out of the pistol. So uh, coming up at the back end of this, I'll have uh, the velocities. I'll have the snapshots of the velocities and the groups on these and uh, we'll have a little bit of discussion about the, the, the comparison with and without the suppressor and the two different barrel ends. So stay tuned, that's all coming up. Okay, so right off the bat, we're gonna go unsuppressed with the rifle. I was going too quick. I've got two of those five shots, so let's put a couple more of these down. There's three, four, and five. Okay. So, 16 inch POF USA. Average velocity was 1,003 foot per second, standard deviation of 47.9, that's not great. Kinetic energy, 502.6 foot pounds. Okay. This is my side folder, guys, by the way. This is the Sylvan Arms uh, side folder. This is the Gen 1. Uh, actually, I'm currently looking at a Gen 2 that actually has a, a sling attachment point, and you can get them to fold left, fold right, and get the sling attachment point on the opposite side. So, uh, you know, this makes a, a nice compact package, especially on the pistol version. Uh, will not fire with the stock collapse, though. The stock does need to be uh, engaged and in place before you fire. So, all right, let's see what we get with this one. shooting too fast. Three shot. Just get over top of it. Four shots. And five shots.
All right, average velocity, 933.6, 50.6 standard deviation. Okay. So at this point, YouTube will not monetize this video simply because it has a suppressor involved in it. All right, so here we go. shooting too fast again. All right. Let's get that fifth one in place. All right. So 1,008 on the last shot, averaged 971.9. Well, I didn't want to get the can so overheated that we couldn't uh, get it off and get it onto the pistol. Okay, so my red dot on this one is just barely there, and I'm shooting an orange target on the back stop, so kind of hard to see. Nine sixty six, nine sixty one. 950, 899, 891. All right, so that gets your five shots in. Let's just uh, let's have some fun with the rest of this mag. All right, guys. We picked up a total of eight of those. So average velocity, 919.8 feet per second. Standard deviation, 34.1. That's down a little bit. I'll get back to the shot. We'll get these crunched down and be back with some comments and pictures. All right, guys. So I'm uh, back in the shop and I've got the numbers crunched down. I actually got everything put in a spreadsheet. And... Uh, getting ready to turn around here and take a look at the velocities on here. And uh, one of the things that you're going to notice, and I've noticed it when I got my first can, which actually was this hybrid 46M back last summer, uh, not hardly a year ago, that just about everything I ran this can on actually had a decrease in velocity. And uh, from what I had read in previous times, uh, you know, I was expecting a little bit of a velocity bump from the suppressor. Uh, not a velocity decrease, but uh, velocity decrease is what I've got. I've ran this and checked it in uh, six arc, uh, 300 blackout, 223, a couple of other calibers, and the velocity decrease seems to be pretty standard with this hybrid 46M. So anyway, let's turn around here and take a look at these numbers and crunch through them real quick, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys, so down here is the two platforms that we were running uh, for this test. Uh, I've got a POF USA 16-inch Renegade upper with a pistol length gas system, and I actually built uh, the POF USA lower to go underneath that, and then I had a KRT build. It's my build, 10.5-inch pistol. That's the one with the side folder on it, also with the pistol length gas system. And uh, so coming back up here, they are 15 carbine, so 16-inch barrel, pistol length gas system. Unsuppressed, my velocity was 1,003 foot per second. Suppressed, my velocity was 972 foot per second. So that's a loss of 31 foot per second, uh, or three, just over 3% of my velocity uh, with the suppressor. Uh, with the pistol, unsuppressed velocity was 934. 
suppressed velocity was 920 for a difference of 14 foot per second. That's a minus one and a half percent. So my velocity loss is less with a shorter barrel. And, uh, and, and that also gives you a quick look. We use these same numbers down here to crunch uh, uh, the barrel comparisons here. So uh, just let's go on down to it. So carbine versus pistol, 1,003 foot per second versus 934 foot per second. So this is five and a half inches less barrel uh, will yield 69 foot per second velocity decrease or about uh, not hardly 7% velocity decrease uh, with that five and a half inch uh, barrel loss between the carbine and the pistol. And then suppressed 972 and 920 for a 52 foot per second velocity difference uh, coming in at 5.35%. So again, we have a uh, we have a smaller velocity change with the suppressor, but we still did lose velocity. So percentage wise, these shorter barrels are more efficient with this suppressor as far as maintaining their, their initial velocities. So I'm, I'm looking at this, when I built this chart, I was looking at this as the decrease in velocity, but we can do the same thing. We can also go up here to 934 on the pistol and say that if we go from a, a 10 and a half inch pistol to a 16 inch carbine, we're gonna gain almost 7% velocity. Uh, so we'll gain 70 foot per second with an extra five and a half inches of barrel. So anyway, uh, there's the numbers. Uh, take a so look. So one of the these. things I did draw with the chart guys is that uh, the velocity decrease between the, the 16 inch and the, and the 10 and a half inch barrel was less running the suppressor. So even though it was still losing velocity of the suppressor, the 10 and a half inch barrel had a, a smaller percentage of loss of velocity with, than, the, than the carbine length barrel did with the suppressor. And that shows up again down on the, on the barrel comparison. Uh, you know, 16 inch uh, to 10 and a half inch unsuppressed was minus 6.8%, whereas with both those suppressed, it was 5.35%. And that just speaks again to how much more efficient the 10 and a half inch barrel is with the suppressor than the 16 inch barrel was so uh if uh if you guys have had any experience running a little quick test like this i'd be glad to hear any comments on it and uh you know this hybrid 46m uh has the clip baffles in it and i i wonder if that is one of the things that are is contributing to to this decrease in velocity versus some of the other suppressors that, that don't have the clip baffles uh, would, would love to hear your comments and, and some feedback on that. Uh, I probably will be shopping for another suppressor uh, in the next several months. And uh, I would be interested in getting something that didn't yield a decrease in velocity for my next suppressor. So, uh, you know, would love to hear any comments. So, all right, guys, uh, take a look at this. Like I said, this is coming up. This chart's coming up uh, in the slideshow uh, here in just a second. I'll also have uh, all four chronograph images uh, from the Garmin Zero, and uh, you know you can crunch through those numbers and compare those. Um, I had a minimum of five rounds for each one of these groups that that I had the average velocity on, and I think for uh, for the suppressed pistol suppressed, I think I was finishing up a mag and maybe even caught eight different velocities on that one. So it's probably the most accurate average uh, of that group. So uh, anyway. Uh, thanks for watching guys. I, I appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, you know, if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, also, I, I just finished up, uh, I've got something like 15 rounds of 300 blackout in the ballistic gel block, uh, doing some testing with those. So if you haven't seen those already, uh, go back out and check those out. And coming up, uh, I've got another group uh, ready to go. This is going to be my last in mass group. And here's a, a little teaser. This is a, a hundred grain Lapua bullet, uh, uh, a Barnes CTSX, a Hornady soft point. Uh, this is one of my cast bullets, uh, 230 grain lead mold that drops out of like 220 some grain. 
this is the same bullet that one of my followers on MeWe sent me that he had powder coated, 230 gram powder coated bullet. And this beast over here is the uh, Acme 265 grain DS Special. And uh, I'll be running all these in the gel block uh, on my next range outing. It's probably gonna be a, a week or so. I'm trying to wait for some, some cooler weather. And, uh, but keep an eye out for those. This group, unless I get a special request from a viewer uh, or I find another bullet that I really had to put in gel block, uh, this group right here will probably be my last large scale group uh, testing in the gel block for the 300 blackout. Uh, I plan, I've got an 8.6 blackout build that parts are rolling in for right now. So I'll be transitioning over to testing on that here in a little bit. And then eventually I want to back up and get my 10 millimeter with all my different loads of 10 millimeter into the gel block and then probably my nine millimeter as well. So uh, that'll all be coming up in future episodes. So stay tuned and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.